Hello, fellow rebel capitalists. Hope you're well. You guys ready to spread the message of freedom, liberty, and free market capitalism? (laughs) I hope so. Now, I want to be clear. You guys just start your own. um, I'm not saying that you have to start a channel on that topic. You start it on whatever you want. But uh, I'm just assuming that the majority, and guys, bear me with me one moment. I got to switch over to the different Wi-Fi's. It might cut out for a second here. There we go. Okay. So let me know in the chat if you can hear me, guys. Sorry about that. That internet connection, I had to, I was on the wrong Wi Fi. So can you guys hear me now? That's good. Okay. Awesome. So, like I was saying, you don't, you can start the channel or you can start a blog or a podcast on whatever you want. I'm just assuming that the majority of the people that are in the rebel cap capitalist community will want to do something talking about economics or, you know, like Anthony court was doing where he was talking about his personal experience with the trucking industry and the economic distortions that have been created by the government and how we can use that kind of boots on the ground Intel to make Uh, better decisions for our portfolio moving forward based on whether or not this inflation that we're seeing or these shortages are going to be transitory or more permanent. So that said, uh, I'm just, I just believe that if I can give you guys the tools to create your own content and to build your own community, then assuming that most of you will have that kind of libertarian uh, free market freedom, liberty message that I'm doing as much as I possibly can to really make a difference in society today. So let's dive into this. And what you guys will find throughout this process is it's a lot of trial and error. And you've got to be willing to make yourself, you've got to be willing to get outside of your comfort zone. I think that's the best way to say it. Fortunately for me, I've been making an ass out of myself my entire life. (laughs) So I don't even have a comfort zone (laughs) or a discomfort zone, I should say. (laughs) But for most of you, getting out and speaking on camera or creating videos that quite frankly suck is something that you don't really want to do. But you've got to embrace it and you've got to just go with it and uh, just you've got to not care what anyone thinks or what anyone says. When I first started my channel and the George Gammon channel, we'll get into the specific metrics here in a moment. But uh, I can't tell you how many comments I had on the videos because back then, you know, when you would get 20 or 30 views on a video, I obviously I was reading all the comments and trying to respond to everyone. And a lot of people would just say, oh, you suck, or oh, this is terrible, or oh, this is why you're never going to get more than 100 subscribers. And this is when I was trying all of these different editing techniques that, that to their credit, or to their, to be fair, they did suck. But what those people didn't realize is it's not that I was doing those edits as though we do them forever. I was just doing them to see what worked and what didn't work. And uh, then you just do more and more and more of what works. I always say it's it's very difficult to have a specific plan. You've got to just keep throwing things up against the wall. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, and see what sticks. And uh, a lot of people aren't comfortable doing that. And so you've got to get out of that mindset. So let's go into the back-end analytics for the George Gammon channel. I'm just going to go over to YouTube. We'll see. I'm uh, I'm logged on as Rebel Capitalist, so we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, 
Okay, then we're going to go over here. Now, I'm not going to show you guys how to actually start a channel because there's just countless YouTube tutorials on that. So uh, you guys can get that from better people than or like professional YouTubers can teach you that far better than I can. And I'm actually going to give you the YouTube channels that I watched at the beginning to actually learn how to create videos and how to grow an audience and kind of where I got the, 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 the real YouTube tips. So we'll go to the YouTube studio. And as you guys know, I haven't been producing as much content on the George Gammon channel as I used to, because I've been really trying to focus on the rebel capitalist channel. So uh, right away here, it just gives you the analytics. Uh, well, actually, let's do this. Let's go to the the more detailed stuff. Okay. So the first thing I want to go over is let's let's move this instead of the last twenty eight days. Let's go to lifetime. And now let's go ahead and look at this. Uh, graph. You'll notice that uh, although I might have started the channel, I'd never posted a, a video up here. I think I just started it just to have my name uh, back in 2014 as, uh, you know, I thought that was important. So I thought I might use it in the future, which I did. <laughs> so I uh, set up the George Gammon channel way back here, probably looks like 2013 or so, probably when I was in Puerto Rico. But then I didn't really upload any videos until we get to basically August of 2019. And when you're looking at this number, 50, I want to point out, this is not for a video. This is for the entire channel. So the entire channel on August 1st, 2019 got 50 views. And 49 of those were my mom just watching the same video over and over and over again. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you guys right now, the hard part, aside from getting out of your comfort zone, the hardest part is to create video after video after video after video after video that doesn't get any view or that gets like five views or 10 views. And you spent like eight hours on that video, or maybe you're like I did at the very beginning, I, when we really started to crank out the content and I'm going to show you guys the videos that I did at the beginning too. But when we really started to make a commitment to this channel after the TV show had ended, um, we were doing like five videos a week. And I was doing whiteboard videos. And let me tell you what, those whiteboard videos are a lot harder and a lot more time consuming than just going on live and doing something like this. And yet still, the the views just really weren't adding up. I mean, we we're getting slightly more views, but we were having to get really excited about the percentages of increase, not the actual number. So we'd go from 100 views to 200 views. And I, I remember I had it up on a whiteboard for all the editors because I'd, I'd want them to see the real-time numbers so they could they could get motivated by it. And I would put, you know, we have a 100% increase this week or we had a 100% increase today. But that's 100% meaning going from 100 views to a 200 views. <laughs> so... My point is, you've got to understand this is a numbers game. And you have to create enough content for the YouTube algorithm to actually pick up your channel. <clears throat> and what that means is you, you'll you most likely have to create video after video after video. You have to put 10, 30, 40, 50 videos before you start to see any real traction on the, the the views or the 
engagement numbers, the watch time, the subscribers, before you see any of that improve dramatically. Here's the thing, though. Once the algorithm picks up the channel and starts picking up and pushing out the videos, then the growth is mind-boggling. So let me give you a specific example. So you can see here, August uh, 1st, we'll call it about 40, 50 views per day. And then we're doing uh, more content. So let's look, 30 views a day, 70 views, seven views on, on Monday, September 9th, 2019. So basically two years ago, the entire George Gammon channel, after creating several videos, had seven views in one day the entire channel let's keep moving on here and we go up to 36 now we're up to 128 back to 57 136 69 i'm trying to move slow here because it really goes up fast so then we're at 76 oh <laughs> okay so we went from 76 to about 250 well we went from seven in september to about 250 on saturday november 2nd and remember this is views for the entire channel november 7th we're up to 654 views in a day November 12th, we're up to basically, what, uh, five days later? We're up to 8,444 uh, views for the channel on this one day. This is not a cumulative total. This is for one day where basically two months, a month and a half earlier, the channel got seven views. In a day. Then, five days later, the channel is getting 70,000 views a day. So remember, two months earlier, the channel is getting seven views. Two months later, 70,000 views per day. Here's my point. You you have to generate a lot of content. You have to generate enough content to where the YouTube algorithm knows that you're most likely going to be a long-term content creator. Now, I know that there's anomalies where someone just puts out one video and it goes viral. I, I get it. But that's very rare. Usually what happens, and, and this makes a lot of sense from YouTube standpoint, it's just like they're an employer and the employer really doesn't want to put a lot of energy into training a new employee until they've been able to screen that employee and know that they're serious about the job long term. So it's the same thing with YouTube. Is if you just throw up a couple videos, they're just like, eh, I mean, is this guy really going to be a content creator long term? Because their objective is to have content creators that are keeping people on the platform as long as possible. So they, they, you see, anyone can set up a, a YouTube video, but they would prefer people set up YouTube videos and create quality content that are going to do this for the next for, for years, not just months or days. So what happens is once that YouTube algorithm sees that, okay, this channel is, they're most likely going to create consistent content for a long time because they've been, they've been producing a video every day for the last 60 days or 90 days or whatever it is. Then that algorithm will, will look at the back end metrics of each video. Because listen, if you make, a video a day for 90 days straight and the videos suck 
the, the, uh, you're not going to get any views. George, did you pay for ads? Great question. Zero. I have never paid one dollar to promote an ad. Never, 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 never. Now, my digital marketing guy, Gene, I think has promoted uh, on Google the uh, Rebel Capitals Pro. But I, and that's a good question because when you see the numbers go from seven to 70,000, what happens is most people just create a video and then they pay for YouTube ads for that video. And that's where you get that vertical growth. Never happened with me. I didn't spend one penny. This is all just organic growth from the algorithm picking it up. So I'm glad I clicked back over to make sure you guys could hear me because that's a really good question. So now let's go back to what I was saying. And the, the last point I was making is that you've got to create good content. If that algorithm looks at your channel and says, okay, this guy is going to be a long-term creator, but your videos aren't getting any engagement. And, and engagement really is um, misunderstood. I'm not talking about likes and comments. I'm talking about average view duration, click-through rate. So we'll, we'll get into that in a moment. But uh, you know, there, it's not going to promote promote videos that are garbage. So if you have are producing videos where the backend analytics are very very good, then once the algorithm picks up your channel, they're going to really promote those videos. And here's how it works. You've got to think of the algorithm in terms of circles, okay? So what it does is it, let's say, oh, let's, actually, let's use a specific video. So when you go to content, uh, let's look at the last video. And, and why these are up here, guys, these videos that aren't live is because I upload them to YouTube and then the editors download them and then re-upload them as an edited version. So you can see my uh, my video here with Doomberg. Uh, this is the original raw version and then the editors edit it and then re-upload it as the final. So that, that's why you're seeing that. But anyway, this is the last whiteboard video I did. So this one has... Uh, 53,000 views, which is a pretty, pretty good whiteboard video. That, that was just published the other day. So that means it'll get up to maybe 70, 80,000. So that, that's, that's a solid video for me. Okay. So and, and now one thing you'll have to remember with the subscribers, for some reason, I don't know why this is, this lags big time. This number lags by like three, like two or three days. It's, it's really weird. I don't know why. The views are obviously real time. Watch time, real time. Uh, your estimated revenue so far, I think that's, that might be lagging too because that should be a little higher. But anyway, what you'll find in a good video like this, especially one of my whiteboard videos, is the subscribers will be about 1% of the views. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah, and you can see that there's inconsistencies in the numbers. Because look at this. Views are up 99%. Um, more regular viewers. And, again, another thing that makes this a little skewed is because I combine interviews with whiteboard videos on the George Gammon channel. And the whiteboard videos get way more views. So if my last video was a, an interview, which I think it was, it says views are up 99%. Well, it's not really a fair comparison because it's not comparison comparing a whiteboard video to a whiteboard video. It's comparing uh, a whiteboard video to an interview. But uh, I don't want to get too into the weeds here. So more regular viewers are choosing to watch the video, helping to increase its reach. Okay, so that means more subscribers are clicking on it. But if we go down here, uh, this was actually, okay, good. We're going to get into that in a moment. 
Okay. I'm, I don't want to get, there's so much information here. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So let's just shelf the subscribers for a minute. We're going to get back to that in a moment. Uh, and again, this typical performance, this gray shaded line, you can't put too much weight into that unless you're creating the same type of video. So when I first really got going with the channel, I was doing five whiteboard videos a week and I wasn't doing interviews. So this was a more meaningful metric because all it is an apples to apples comparison. But now it, it's it's not really an apples to apples comparison. So I don't put too much weight into that number. Now, this is new with YouTube. This was not here when I started my channel. So they kind of give you these tips on why this video is doing well. And this is actually very, very helpful. So they're saying this video is doing better than others because it has more views from YouTube recommendations. And that would, uh, so it could, let's see, I want to, I don't want to give you too much information here, but let me just pause for a moment and let you guys in on some kind of secrets here. When you subscribe to a channel, uh, you don't automatically get the notification. Even if you hit the bell, the notification bell. It's weird. It's kind of, I don't know why YouTube does that. It's kind of misleading. But they really only give you the recommendation, you'll only see it pop up if it thinks you'll watch the video. So it tracks everything that you do on YouTube. And if you've watched a lot of my videos over the last week, let's say, and if you're a subscriber, and if you've hit the notification bell, then there's a very, very good chance that you'll get that notification. Even if you don't get the notification, my newest video will mo most likely show up on your recommendations or on your homepage. But let's say that you're someone that subscribes to the George Gammon channel and even has clicked the notification bell, but you haven't watched one of my videos in like a month or two. You're probably not going to probably not going to get that notification. It's all algorithm based or the majority of it. And so you got to keep that in mind. But uh, what we can do, and it shows you the traffic source. Okay, so we'll get into that in a moment. But it's saying, so more views from YouTube recommendations. So is this from non-subscribers or subscribers? That's very, very important. But this is a, a good thing, obviously, that it's going out to more people who, uh, uh, or it's recommending it to more viewers, whether they're subscribers or not. So high click-through rate. This is telling us that uh, this this uh, thumbnail is doing well, along with the title. So the click-through rate is if YouTube shows this thumbnail to 100 viewers, how many people actually click on the video? So my usual is 4.6 to 5.6, which is very good. Uh, this video is getting 9.1. So that's really, really, really good. So this just shows you that the combination of the thumbnail and the title is performing very well. And this really gets into the weeds. I, I won't go into this right now. This is really what you got to be cognizant of. So let me break it down to, to very, in, a, in the simplest way I can. If you can create videos that have a high click-through rate and, in addition to that, have a very high average view duration. It's not a matter of if you will do well on YouTube. It's only a matter of when. That's actually what I like about YouTube. Is It's, it's really, at the end of the day, it, it's just kind of a numbers game. And I know that, uh, you know, some people get shadow banned. And I mean, my channel got taken down the other day, for heaven's sakes, the Rebel Capitalist channel. And uh, but for the most part, uh, it, it this is a numbers game. And if you can. If you can create good numbers, if you can create content that produces good numbers, click through rate, average view duration 
you're you're going to have success on YouTube. Uh, it's just a matter of time. So what's really cool about this? Let's, let's go to see more. If you click on see more, so first of all, let me go over this. The average view duration for this video, 31 minute video, was 14 minutes, 46.1%. That's very, very good. Very good. You, it, most people think that everyone watches the whole video. They don't, <laughs> not even close. Um, but if you listen to the YouTube professionals, and I'll give you guys the, the people who I go to for advice. They'll say that you want to shoot for a 50% view duration, or even better, 50% of the people watching at the end of the video. But that's for videos that are like five minutes long. So obviously, the longer the video, the lower your average view duration will be. So to have an average view duration of 46.1% on a 31-minute video, that's dynamite. That's dynamite. That's why my whiteboard videos get so many views. That's why the algorithm takes and pushes those whiteboard videos out to so many people that are not only subscribers, but also non-subscribers. When, when we go back for a moment to the graph that we saw when I first started, when in two months, the channel went from getting seven views to 70,000 views. What happened is I had built a, a content library when the channel just went completely ballistic. I had, I had created a content library with a lot of videos that had really good metrics. Even though they weren't getting very many views, they had great click-through rates and they had great average view durations. So when YouTube saw that channel, they said, holy smokes, this is some great content. We're going to go ahead and push these videos out. Now that goes back to the, the circles I was talking about earlier where I got sidetracked. YouTube will take your, your video and they will shoot it out to a group of people that they think are most likely to watch. Then what they'll do is they'll analyze the data. They'll look at the click-through rate. They'll look at the average view duration. And if it's good, then they'll send it out to an even bigger circle. But the bigger circle isn't the cream that's risen to the top. What I mean, that's not, or another way to say that probably, it's not the low-lying fruit. It's, it's not the people that are most likely to watch the video. It's, it's maybe the second tier down. And then it monitors how well the video performs with that group. And if it does well, it shoots it out to the third circle, the fourth circle, the fifth circle. And it keeps shooting it out to bigger and bigger groups until the data comes back and says, no one's watching it anymore. And then it kind of flatlines. So when you see a, a, a video go viral, quote unquote, what's happening is YouTube is sending that out to a, a small circle. They're loving it. And each and every circle that that grows bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, the numbers stay the same until it's got a million views, 10 million views, whatever, however many millions of views. So that's why you've really got to pay attention to these back-end numbers. And even if you're if you're producing a lot of content, or even if you're not, you know, it's just a matter of time. If if I was producing five videos a week so my channel got picked up uh, pretty quick if you're producing one video a week or two you're still going to get there so don't be discouraged it's just going to take a little more time for that algorithm to to pick things up so even if you're not getting very many views you should be hyper focused on these numbers click through rate average view duration because this really gives you the confidence and the inspiration and the motivation to continue. Because even if you're getting four, five, 20, 30 views, a video like I was, you can know and have quite a bit of confidence that if your back end analytics are good, just keep doing what you're doing. 
And it's just a matter of time before the channel really starts to exceed your expectations. Let me give you another metric. Right at the end of the video, this is very important. So for this video, it was 35% of the people watched it all the way to the end. And that's good for a 31 minute video. But ideally, you'd want to be around 50 minutes, or excuse me, 50%. So let's go back here. So if this video was only 10 or 12 minutes, which by the way is ideal for a YouTube video, I would have that 50% mark. And believe me, I, I always try to make my videos shorter. But for me, it's this balancing act as do I want to make it a video 10 or 12 minutes, which would be optimal for the algorithm? Or do I want to make it 30 minutes, which is suboptimal, but yet allows me to explain what I'm trying to explain more thoroughly? <laughs> and I just, I always just, I wish I could explain myself in less time, but unfortunately I can't. Now there is some, there, there is kind of a debate on YouTube because we know that YouTube wants people on the platform longer. So it, it's going to prefer a video with a, a lower average view duration if the video is a lot longer. So if we had a three minute video that had a 50% view duration and we had a three hour video that had a 20% view duration, YouTube is most likely going to prefer that three-hour video because it's keeping people on the platform longer. But here's the secret. It's all in the end screens. See, when you have 50% of the people watching the video all the way to the end, a lot more people are going to see the end screen. And that's the things that pop up, the options that pop up at the end of the video. You guys know how at the end of my whiteboard videos, I always say for more content that'll help you build wealth and thrive in a world of out of control, central banks, and big governments, check out this playlist right here and I'll see you on the next video. See, why do I do that? And I should do this and I should do this a lot more strategically. I just don't have time. But if, if I did this well, or if I optimized, I would create playlists that have maybe four or five videos in them that were directly applicable to the video the person was watching. Because that increases the probability of them clicking on another video on the channel and watching that. And then they go to the end screen and maybe they watch another video and another video and they, maybe they binge watch. That is what YouTube loves. There is nothing YouTube loves more than when someone gets to the end of your video and clicks on another video from your channel. So it, it's there's a lot of variables that are involved here. There's no one secret sauce. There's a lot of uh, metrics that the algorithm uses. But if you just focus on producing content that hits these numbers, listen, it's just a, a matter of time before your channel really starts to perform extremely well. So now let's look at some of the earlier, let me make sure I'm still on here. Yeah, good, still on, great. Now let's go through and let's see, how do I even do this here? I'm trying to look at my earliest videos. Let's go, uh, let's do this. This is probably the long way to do it, but I'm gonna increase the rows and then what I'm gonna do is just go all the way back to the beginning. Okay, sorry guys, this takes a little time here. <laughs> I've, I've produced quite a few videos. Uh, 
Okay, trust me, guys. This is this. I've got a point here. You're going to want to see this. It just takes me a while to. And you guys can do this when you go to my channel and just sort the videos by uh, oldest, and you'll get to the, the videos I did first. Here we go. So, wow, that was just kind of a trial run there. This is really the first video I did. And I, I want to be clear, this one right here. Uh, although this has 2,900 views, the only reason it has 200 or 2,000 views or 3,000 is because people have gone back and watched it. Trust me, when I first did this video, <laughs> it only got like, like two or three views. So let's look at this. Let's do the analytics. Yeah, so you can see the views initially. And then what happened <laughs> once the channel grew, everyone went back and wanted to see the first few videos. So you can't really look at the metrics here. But look at the thumbnail, guys. You see any difference? This is what we started with, with thumbnails. And again, I want to point out, this was not 10 years ago. Uh, this was two years ago, basically. So now let's uh, go ahead and watch, I think the vid the volume here might be a little screwed up, or the audio, but just bear with me. Let's see what we got. Attracting new customers has been tricky. So we claim their free business profile on Google. Yeah, now we can accept bookings. Okay, let's just deal with this commercial for a second. Oh, jeez. Okay. So let's... First of all, we look at the thumbnail, which was terrible. And now let's look at the <clears throat> the title. Medellin Remodel Project Art Apartment. <clears throat> Video 1. Nobody is going to click on that. That, that is not an enticing... Uh, no one... And why did I put it the art apartment? A project art apartment. Even if someone was looking on YouTube for videos on a Medellin remodel project, they're not going to know what the art apartment is, nor do they care. So this is just wasted words. Um, you know, what would be better is to say, like, unbelievable Medellin remodel penthouse or something like that and to, to title them to, to number them this is all just a waste and then you know i tried to write a description in here that was enticing it's just it's all bad but then you look at the actual video itself Okay, so basically I'm just talking into a camera. I'm not not even a camera, my cell phone. And I'm just walking around the apartment. Um, you know, it's shaky. I mean, this is terrible. I mean, okay, so you guys get it. I, we don't <laughs> need to watch the rest of it. But it's terrible, right? And I'd also like to point out that it has nothing to do with macro. Definitely not a whiteboard video. It's just me with my cell phone. So how did I go from this to doing whiteboard videos on macro? Well, I've always been most passionate about macroeconomics. But as you guys know, I've been investing in real estate for a long, long time. And, you know, we had that TV show in, in Medellin early 2019. So I, when I first started the channel, I thought, you know, no one's going to want to watch 
videos on macroeconomics. It's just going to bore people. But, you know, maybe they'll want to watch videos on real estate. So I'll start a channel talking about my real estate projects. So again, how did we get to macroeconomics? Because I kept trying new things and new things and new things. And what, and I'll show you here in just a moment. You'll see this. And tell, I found that the first videos that really started to get some traction and views, even though it was very, very small, were the whiteboard videos. And then the ones that I did on macro. That because eventually I'm like, I got to get this stuff off my chest. I'm very passionate about it. I know the audience will hate it. But let me just do this macro topic because this is what I want to talk about today. And sure enough, those are the ones that everyone responded to. So let's. So that was the first video. Let's go back and check out another one. And you guys can see the progression. So that's where we started. This one um, looks like... Okay, so this is a little bit different. And it looks like I did this on the same day because what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to play around with YouTube and just figure out how it works. Because at this stage, I didn't even really know how to upload the videos. Honestly, I, I didn't I had I didn't even know what buttons to push. And I believe my I had my editors working on something else at this time. And this was me just playing around with it to try to learn the uh, the user interface. So when I did have my editors come on board, we could kind of hit the ground running. Let's check out this video. So now I'm trying to mess around with the thumbnails, you can tell here. And <laughs> it cut off the top of my head. <laughs> Oh, uh, but I, I'm just basically watching other professional YouTube channels and seeing what they do. And I'm like, let me try to copy that. Let, let me see how this works. Let me see how to do this. So this is me just messing around. I don't know how the heck I did that thumbnail, but uh, this is not my thumbnail gal doing this. So <laughs> I know Catherine does incredible thumbnails and she would be embarrassed if you thought she actually did this. But th so this is George Gammon doing this thumbnail. I had Catherine doing other stuff at this time. So real estate investors, would you like to get 40%? You see, so now I'm trying to do an intro that's going to capture people's attention. And uh, because this is what I'm seeing all these other professional YouTubers do. And I just, I remember that I used, and I forgot what this software was called. I think I still have it. But anyway, I, I'm trying to do something, you know, not in front of my phone. I'm trying something else. Plus returns. Or have you thought about investing outside of the United States? Well, if so, this video is definitely for you. You see, doesn't that sound a lot more like normal YouTube videos where I'm doing that intro? And this was also a learning experience and me just trying different things. I used to do the, the let's go to another video here. So these were similar types of videos and then it starts Where did it start? Right here. This is when my editors started to work on the YouTube channel, August 1st, which is pretty much reflected by the, the views that we saw earlier. Because initially I was going to have them do vlog, real, first of all, real estate investing, but vlogs, because I thought, okay, we just got done doing a TV show. So why not do a, a vlog? It kind of makes sense. This was the very first video that I did with the editors and with Catherine, the gal that now does the thumbnails. All these others were me just kind of 
playing around and trying to do different things, different types of videos on my own, just working to make sure I knew what buttons to push with the, the platform. This is when it took, when we really started to focus on the channel. And this was our first attempt at a video. But notice how much different this is than the two videos we just saw. And keep in mind, this is not a span of uh, three years, this transition. This is simply a span of, a, of, what, a month, a month and a half, something like that. Let's watch this video. Goodbye, Roman fees that rack up overseas. Hello, automatic coverage when I'm exploring the world. Hello, Google Fi, a phone plan that can. Oh, jeez. All right, all right. There we go. Hi, guys. My name is George Guillermo, and I'm here in Medellin, Colombia. I've been here since about 2015. I've been investing in real estate, and I've got a local TV show here called Vida and Remodelación. Ahora, Medellín tiene su propio programa de remodelación. Mira Angie, Joaquín y George convirtiendo feos. And that follows my architect, myself, and my designer around as we remodel apartments here in Poblado. I've got a by the way, I was sick as a dog when we were doing this. <laughs> this is my closet in my uh, one of my apartments in Medellin. But uh, man, I was sick for this YouTube channel now that I just started. And it goes into a lot of the macro, kind of macroeconomic analysis as it pertains to real estate investing. But I wanted to kind of give people not only the information side and the macro and the data and the charts. That's kind of boring, and that does have. <laughs> Yeah, we can take these. Three. So what I did there is I set it up to where I was going to a fashion show or to this fashion um, convention. It's uh, it's a big deal in Medellin, and I was going to take the viewers along with me. It's like what's you know a day in the life of a real estate investor here in Medellin. So what I did is I set up the story for the vlog you, you wanted to have a story so that now we're going to see what it's like to go to this uh, fashion convention or fashion event all right so we're right downtown got out of the uber it was like a big convention center here in town they call it plaza mayor got it but I retired back in 2012, and before I retired back in the United States, I used to go to these things all the time. I had my finger on the pulse of the kind of the fashion back in the States, but here I've got no clue. The only thing I know about fashion here is they don't make shoes big enough for my feet. I wear a size 12, and you cannot find a size 12 anywhere in Colombia. That I know for sure. <laughs> So we got inside here, this is the convention space. Okay, so guys, are you seeing the difference between the three videos? The first one we started with, the second one, and this one? And keep in mind, this was in a, a span of a month and a half or so. And then we go, this, now I want to be clear. Please do not expect to create a video like this in a month and a half. This was basically our TV show. So uh, all these clips and edits and fast cuts and bam, 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 all of this is meant to keep uh, viewers engaged on TV. So th if you don't produce something, don't worry about it. It's, it's, I'm just showing you this to illustrate how You've got to just try different techniques and see what works. And, and don't be afraid to try completely different things at the beginning and then just focus on those back-end analytics. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then along with the TV show, we'd throw in a little humor here. Bear that shoot back into the main part. What's that? Right behind me. Oh, I did not notice that. <laughs> I swear that's random, right? <laughs> that was funny. 
All right. So you guys understand that. Now let's keep moving on. Pretty damn good vlog, too, but I might add. I think if we would have stuck with these vlogs, <clears throat> excuse me, I think if we would have stuck with these vlogs, they, they actually would have done really, really well. Because compare this to a, a normal vlog that you see on YouTube. I and mean, this is, in, in my humble opinion, this is 10 times better. And I think the back end analytics would reflect that. But let's that's not what's important right here. So let's go back to the videos. So now we're doing more of these uh, vlogs, but at the same time, I'm doing kind of the behind the scenes stuff. I think this is where I started to try whiteboard videos. Let's look at this one. This is where we first, oh no, you know what? You guys might like this story. This was the very first thumbnail that I had Catherine do with a bobblehead. You, you might say, oh, George, it's this one. It's not. It was actually this one. And what happened is this video performed really well, and relatively speaking. And I remember the click-through rate was way higher on this video than some of the others. And it was just, and I remember that we use this, see? It's not a normal bobblehead, but my head is a little bit bigger. So I told Catherine, I'm like, you know what? Maybe people are responding more to that bobblehead. So keep doing that. And then I'm like, in fact, change it on that last video we did to see if, if we can improve the click-through rate on this existing video that's live. This was the genesis of the bobblehead thumbnail. It all started right here with this one. So let's look at this video real quick. Attracting new customers oh has been goodness. tricky. So we planned our free business profile on Google. Yeah, now we can accept bookings, list our products, even post updates. Our free business profile helps us stand out and connect with customers on Google. Friends would walk up to me and just be like, what the f is in your mug? And I would just tell them it's mud. Hi guys, in today's video, there we we're go. going to answer the question, is the U.S. housing market... That's what I thought. So this was the first video we did with a whiteboard. So let's think about this, guys. I start off, and this is all within a two-month span, or a month and a half. I start off with doing videos with my phone right in front of me. Then I try some videos where I'm talking on the computer, similar to this video. Then we start doing vlogs, real estate investing vlogs. Now at the same time, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to mix it up even more and say, well, let's just do a whiteboard video. And <laughs> people used to love and really comment on this background. And they used to say, my goodness, it looks like George is doing a whiteboard video in the jungle. And this may seem funny, and it is ridiculous, but this illustrates one of my main points. And if you guys could just, if this is the only thing you, you take away from this video, it's worth it. It's worth it if you just have this one takeaway. You, you have to just do, you, you have to just execute. You have to just get up off the couch and take action and just let the chips fall where they may. So let's think about what most people would do here. So, well, actually, first, let me back up. Why did I do this? Because I didn't have a stand for my whiteboard and I couldn't find one at the local, at the local hardware store. So most people would be like, oh, well, I'm not going to shoot my video. It was a good idea, but I, I mean, I'm not going to do a whiteboard video and throw it out there on YouTube in front of billions and billions of people if I don't have a stand. I mean, I'm going to look like an idiot. That, that's most people's attitude. What's my attitude? 
and this goes back to my day, and this is one of the main reasons I was successful as an entrepreneur. My attitude is we don't have a stand. Okay. F it. Screw it. I don't need a stupid stand. What what can we put on? Put on the table? Let's do that. Put it over here. Let's do that. I, I don't I don't need a stand. Let's just let's just do. Let's just make it happen. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's just do this and see what happens. Let's just throw things up against the wall. I don't care if it looks ridiculous. I don't care if I look stupid. I don't care if it looks like I'm doing a whiteboard video in a jungle. Who cares? I just want to do this whiteboard video to do it, see how it goes. Let's get the back end analytics and let's go from there. I don't care if I look like a jackass. So what this was is a ledge that I actually have in one of my apartments in Medellin. And this was an area where I was building a jacuzzi. <laughs> and this ledge was to put your wine glasses <laughs> and your champagne bottles on this thing. And the jacuzzi was going to go right where I'm standing. And we just hadn't put the jacuzzi in yet. So we had this ledge. So I'm like, screw it. Put the damn thing right here. Let's knock out a whiteboard video. If I could just impose that attitude on on everyone watching this right now, th that would be the, the best value bomb, if you will, <laughs> I could give in, in this whole workshop. Just, again, don't worry about what people think. Just make it happen. Just do it. Just try, try, try. Change, iterate, 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 improve. Iterate, improve. Iterate and improve. So this is the first whiteboard video I did that now has made me, I don't want to use the word famous, but it's, 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 it's made me YouTube famous in, in this little space, let's say. It, it, these, this was the genesis of the whiteboard videos that everyone likes. Let's just put it that way. And look at how bad this is. As risky now as it was in 2006. See how bad the audio is? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Did I care? Nope, not at all. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and answer that question right now. Yes, absolutely it is. And right now, I'm going to get... Okay, so you notice how I put yes, but then Thomas, the, I think he was the editor that was working on this, he puts yes up with a little exclamation point and an animation with a ding. That was all intentional. And you may say, why, George? That's the most annoying ding I have ever heard. It is. I, I get it. <laughs> what was I doing? I was just trying to edit things in all of these wild, crazy ways and then sit back, watch the retention graph and see if that prompted people to leave the video or if it prompted people to stay on the video. And you can see that by that first graph of the retention rate. Is it staying the same? Is it flatlining or, is, or when I do those dings, are people just dropping right off? I'll give you my top five reasons as to why. Let's dive right in. Reason number one, the U.S. has more mortgage debt today than it did in 2009. We start off in 1950 and the mortgage debt stays pretty much the same. Until so we get to 1971, that's when we went off the gold standard. Then it starts to increase gradually until we get to 1981. And that's when we start. So it's more of the same. A lot of dings, a lot of bells, a lot of whistles, uh, a few graphs and charts. But that was the first whiteboard video right there, guys. So you can see how much it's changed. And um, I think you get my point. That that's That's why this YouTube channel has been successful. That's why I've been successful in a lot of different things I've done. Um, you, you'll notice that, that and I, I don't at all want to sound like I'm bragging or anything, because it's, it's, it's not what this is about, but you'll notice that a lot of people are successful in one thing. Maybe they're a doctor and they do that their entire lives and they become a very good doctor and they make a lot of money at it. Or they're an engineer or they're a lawyer. Or maybe they're an entrepreneur and they have one or two businesses that you know do well. 
I have been fortunate enough to make money in pretty much every single thing I've ever done. And they have been wildly different from a YouTube channel to an advertise for a media buying business. I mean, they're all completely different. Why is that? It's not because I'm anything special and I don't have any, uh, I have just an average intelligence at best. The reason is because of work ethic and the reason it's because I have this attitude where I just take action and I just, and I don't care what people think. And I just continue to try different things. Look at what we've done on, let's on the rebel capitalist channel just in the last week or so. I mean, if you guys watch the channel, which obviously you do, what have we tried? We, we tr I had the, the, the Rebel Capitalist channel is skyrocketing in popularity right now. The views are just going like this. But what do I do? I continually change. I said, Josh, get a phone. Let's figure out how to take phone calls. And when you guys, if you guys listened to those that first video we did live, by the way, I'm not even editing it, just live. Let's just take phone call. Let's see what happens. Am I prepared? No, not even close. But let's just do it. Let's just make it happen. And the first uh, video was a disaster. Like I couldn't hear the people. I didn't, didn't know what was going on. And then we did another video with phone calls, got a little bit better. And then we're like, okay, let's change the phone calls and just take them directly onto StreamYard. And then we come to the conclusion, okay, that's what works best. But you see, I can, you can sit here and try to pontificate on what's going to work best and try to figure it all out. And it's going to take you weeks and weeks and weeks. And then you're just going to come to the conclusion that you need to tweak things anyway. When instead, you just get out there and do it, and you're going to learn much faster and you're going to grow the business in a way that's not only uh, more efficient, but far more sustainable and much faster in the process. So I, I hate to beat a dead horse, but if you can just get that one message, it's going to help you in, in anything you do, regardless of whether you're trying to set up a YouTube channel, a podcast, a blog, or a business in, in the real economy. Same thing. Okay, let's keep going here. So you can see the how we try. And then here's another example of something else I'm trying that's brand new. The very next video we do after the whiteboard video is a before and after with reels. Now look at how much different this video is. If you like before and after videos, you are going to absolutely love this. I cannot wait for you guys to check this out. And make sure you stay to the end of the video. Because I'm going to give you all my numbers, what I paid for the project, what it cost me to remodel it, and what my profit is going to be. I, I know I'm going to beat a dead horse, guys, but this is the fourth video that is just wildly different than the others. Because intentionally. Even the edits on this are different. Even the beginning, the intro, I'm outside. I'm punching the camera to go to the next cut. I'm just, let's see what works. Let's see what doesn't. This is a trial and error process. And then you can see, then it's just kind of like a normal before and after video. So now it's just showing an apartment when I first bought it. This is the gold apartment, and, uh, which is rented out now. And, uh, and by the way, we did a great job on this. So this is what it looked like before. And then uh, it cuts to kind of like in the middle of the process, of what it looked like. And then it goes to kind of the after shots. Yes, this is the same apartment that you saw right back here. <laughs> Okay, so one thing here before we go. Oh, it you know we went room by room, so I just I just really got to show you guys the master bedroom. I'm very proud of this master bedroom.
Oh, look at that. Nice. Oh, you get that right there, guys. So you got your master bedroom right here. You've got your little study. It goes right into the master bath. It's got a glass window in the shower that looks right out to your personal jacuzzi. Boom. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is what I was doing, in, and I still do in the apartments down there. I put a jacuzzi in the master bedroom. In the platinum apartment that I've got down there that we just did, I put a jacuzzi uh, in the master bathroom. So just wanted to point that out. <laughs> oh, there it is. You see the water? So you can sit there. You're, that's in the master bathroom. You got the wood around there. And by the way, that's that's in a different apartment. That's where I was doing the whiteboard videos. Right on this wood, you can see the plants right there. Uh, and then you got the, a, a decent view out this way. But you could sit there, jacuzzi, you're in the master bedroom, you got your glass of wine, you can read a book. Who's not going to want to rent this apartment? Oh, there's the bet. Okay, so then we go over the numbers. And I go over the budget. So there you go. So the ARV is about 220 grand. I was out of pocket 163. We rented it for $2,000 a month. Um, but that's not what's important. What's important is the, the diversity in how I'm just trying just everything I possibly can to see what works best. I think this, oh, and here's where I started to go over the macro stuff. <laughs> uh, great thumbnail, by the way. <laughs> uh, so this is when we really were tweaking it and working on the, the bobblehead thing. And this is when I first started doing macro stuff instead of like kind of, doing something other than real estate, which again is something that most people would never do. Forward is providing business. Uh, I don't want to watch. Okay. You guys, we don't need to do that. So let's go try to find them because this is just going to be another whiteboard video. The only difference there is the transition to macro topics and uh, next one, real estate blog. Okay. You get that. Let's see some more changes here. Okay, so now, oh, this is this was the first one that crushed it. Right here. Housing Bubble 2.0. Whiteboard video. Great thumbnail. Look at the views. 149,000. And, and uh, th this one, in fact, I remember this one. This one is, this was the one where I'm like, okay, these whiteboard videos, these things work. And... I did that pension fund. So I'm like, okay, this is the macro seems to be working, but this one obviously still about real estate. But then I started doing rent control and then, but still here, let's look at this guys, because I have this huge success. And, and by the, it, it did not get 149,000 views. Originally this got like, I don't know, 300 views. I mean, that's what was, going viral <laughs> to me back then was if it got 300 views. Uh, so, but this is the first one that I knew, okay, this is really doing well, these whiteboard videos, but what am I doing? I'm still changing. I'm still trying new things. Look at this video. Good and, 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 and the actually, let me, We'll go ahead and play it. So, but like, okay. So, why am I doing this? Because I saw online that these were doing really, really well. So, I wanted to just try it myself and see if it worked well for my channel. 
even though I had done some whiteboard videos, I, I had done all these vlogs, all these different types. And even though we had success with the whiteboard video, I'm still trying different things. I'm still throwing things up against the wall to see what sticks. And let's just wait till the end of this. There we go. Yo, I am in the hills of Medellin. For a luxury mansion tour of this amazing, amazing home. So this was more of, of the vlog style, but you guys can see it's just kind of like a property tour. It's one hell of a door, isn't it? <laughs> so going, just going through, and I'm I'm kind of going in deep, going through the whole home in detail here. Incredible view, Buster, right here, right. I remember this kid was crazy. We've got these built-ins here. So basically, I'm, I'm going through and just describing the whole house. It was a, an incredible home. And uh, I was just, why? Because I'm just seeing the back-end analytics, seeing how many views it got. And then we go back. Let's see here. When was that? Okay. And so now I start moving into, once I see that those whiteboard videos are doing better, and then once I see that the macro topics are really doing better, I'm like, wow, great. Let me try it again because that last housing video did well. So let me do another housing market video, which did well. While at the same time, the uh, macro stuff was starting to do well. So I'm like, okay, I get it. Now I've done enough testing, I realize what people want to see. And what was great about that is that was the content that I was really passionate about producing. So it really worked well. So then I started uh, talking about specific people who are famous. Why? Um, because that that's... I knew that more people would be searching for Dave Ramsey's name than George Gammon. So I wanted to try that in the title to see if that could get me some more juice with the algorithm through search by using Dave Ramsey's name because Dave Ramsey had a, a lot of uh, uh, searches. When, when you look at the, I use this vid IQ, but by the way, I can tell that, tell you that too as a tip. I use VidIQ, which is just a, a plug-in to Chrome, and that gives you a lot of these analytics, and you can test keywords to see how many searches they're getting per month, and then how easy they would be to rank for that keyword. So Dave Ramsey happened to be a good keyword, and as you guys know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of Dave Ramsey. <laughs> so, so I'm like, I'm going to point out how this guy is completely ignoring the the macro data for housing which he he, he does a lot I, I don't like it but uh so i started doing that that's an example of another uh thing that i was trying to test so iterate 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 see that the whiteboards are doing well see that the macro topics are doing well so do those videos but now let's try to refine let's try to refine my thumbnails let's try to refine the titles to be more search friendly. You see how this process works? And now you'll notice much more consistency with the thumbnails. Look at the thumbnails now. You see? Now I'm still trying new things, but you can see we're really gravitating to one type of video. And if I'm not mistaken, even these videos, I'm doing them in front of the jungle. Oh, this was the this was the first video that really, really took off. This recession 2020. I remember that. Actually, let me do this. Let me.
Well, it doesn't matter. Bottom line is I was still doing them in front of the jungle thing, e even with uh, with these videos. I was still there. You know, this was probably three weeks, a month or whatever, after we started doing the whiteboard video. I still hadn't got a stand yet. Was I still doing the videos? Did I let that stop me? No, absolutely not. Still doing them. And then around, uh, I don't know which videos they were, but we trans we transitioned into a new whiteboard where uh, that was in the bedroom where I I would I didn't have the bushes behind me, but it's not like that was a perfect. And here it is right here. Let's look at this. Let me turn off the ads. See, so now we've got a new background, so we don't have the jungle, still have the same whiteboard. So you say, oh, George, well, I can't do that because, I mean, obviously now you got a studio and you had the money to get a studio and, you know, people just make all these crazy excuses. This is not a studio, folks. This is the spare bedroom in one of my apartments. And I am literally doing this video inside of a bed frame that's no joke inside of a bed frame we just took the mattress off and put it to the side and tried to set it up there to give it better audio and then i did i put the whiteboard right above the top of the bed frame and i would just put my pens on the the, the top of that bed frame so my point here is to show you just work with what you've got it doesn't have to be great just just do it just keep going out there and just improving your skill uh e even if it's not perfect and and notice look at how bad the lighting is see we still hadn't gotten professional lighting yet i didn't care i was still doing the videos come to a special Thanksgiving weekend video. I want to discuss a few things that are going on with the channel specifically. And no video would be complete on this channel without some data and numbers. Okay, so now look at what I'm doing. I'm going over data and numbers for the channel itself. Okay, and then what do I do? And keep in mind, again, this is way different. So here you can see it. You see the bottom of the screen? That's the headboard for for the for the uh, the bed frame. <laughs> so I'm standing where the mattress goes. Got a couple of the people working right here right now. So why don't we go ahead and bring them into the video? We've got Stephanie. She's one of the editors, and we have Thomas right here as well. So Stephanie, <laughs> what have you enjoyed most? about working on the channel okay so now i'm i'm bringing them in number one to just really keep them motivated because obviously they're doing a fantastic job thomas is still uh still works for me by the way thomas still edits every single whiteboard that you guys see today uh stephanie went on to a, a different job and uh she's doing great but uh thomas is is still editing every single whiteboard among others and he does the podcast and he does a lot of things so uh, it's, it, it's, we kind of just built a, a, a family, but, uh, I'm doing this to really introduce people to the, the individuals who are behind the scenes, because I thought it would be a neat way to kind of build community and make people feel more part of the group, the, the viewers. And the reason I'm telling you this is because again, it, it is an example of me trying new things and, uh, just trying to, not only focus on views and and um, backend analytics, but also just really focus on people. Because at the end of the day, that's all you're doing. You're creating content for other human beings. And I think sometimes we forget that. So I think... I mean, I could go on with these videos and show you guys the the, the changes, but I, I think you get it. 
And this is what you need to do with your videos. You need to decide what topic you want to talk about, but don't get married to it. Don't just say, okay, what do I want to talk about right now? I may be talking about something completely different in two months. But let's just, let's see how this goes. Another thing, you know, people sit there and and ponder and try to figure out their channel name for years and years. Don't do that. Just wh whatever. Just something that comes to mind that sounds good. I did George Gammon. I mean, that's how the extent of my creativity. <laughs> so don't worry about that. Uh, but you want to not only throw things up against the walls to see what sticks, but you've got to look at those back-end metrics. That's the key. You don't want to just do different things to do different things. There, there needs to be a, a well-thought-out approach to it. And then when you try something new, you've got to go back and look at the numbers, look at the click-through rate, look at the retention rate, look at how many subscribers, non-subscribers are watching the video, look at how much YouTube is pushing it out to people's uh, search or uh, suggested, excuse me, and people pushing it out to their, uh, watching it and clicking it on their homepage. I didn't get into all those numbers, but I would highly suggest that you guys get into the weeds as much as possible with the data even when you're not getting a lot of subscribers because that's going to tell you the videos that you need to continue to produce and improve and then once youtube picks picks up the algorithm once it picks up your videos in your channel then it's going to shoot it out to bigger and bigger circles and there's a higher probability that the the the, the metrics you have stay consistent with the bigger and bigger circle and that's when the magic happens or the bigger and bigger audience. Now let's go over some, let's see if I'm, is everyone still here? Yeah, I've still got a lot of people here, great. What program and software do you use to interview people? StreamYard. And um, yeah, StreamYard is, is what we, oh, I'm sorry, no, no, no. Well, StreamYard is what I use, Anthony, for the uh, uh, live streams. For the interviews, I use Zoom or Skype. Okay, so now let's go over some channels that uh, from pro YouTubers who I trust, who you guys can go to to really learn more. And these are the, the, the guys and gals that I still go to if, if I have a question or if I'm trying to think through something to continue to improve. Uh, and I, I don't do that too much nowadays, but back when I first started the channel, I really did this a lot. So I owe a lot of my success to these people. The first one is a good buddy of mine, Miles Beckler. This guy is fantastic. And not only does he walk through starting a, a YouTube video, but he's an expert digital marketer. And he's an expert blogger. And he also turns his uh, uh, YouTube videos into podcasts, similar to what I do with the interviews. And what's great about his channel is if you go to videos and then you sort by oldest. This is the very first video he did. And you guys can watch his transition exactly like you can watch the transition or through the same lens that you can watch the transition that I had with my channel. He did the same thing. But what's really cool about Miles is he kind of, his videos were walking you along through his process from A to Z, giving you every step. See, I didn't do that, obviously. Uh, I wasn't trying to teach people back then. I was just trying to create and build the channel. But he talks about choosing your niche online 
And then what he does, it, while he's teaching you all of these things, how to create YouTube videos, how to uh, just create online content, basically, he also goes through these, uh, how to build an affiliate funnel. Uh, but he does these 90-day challenge, or he did a 90-day challenge where he was producing a video every day for 90 days straight. And then at the end of the 90-day cha challenge, he gives you his results. And he goes through all the back-end metrics like I just did. And then he does, uh, he continues it further and does a 120-day. And I think, is that where he ended it? I'm not sure. But this is just, and it's all free. All free. Uh, this is what really helped me build my channel. What was Miles Beckler's content? And not only build the channel, but really understand how once you do build the channel, kind of the the opportunities to monetize. So number one suggestion would be Miles Beckler, and tell him I sent you because he's a great guy. I've interviewed him for my channel. Next would be a guy named Tim Schmoyer, and his channel is called uh, Video Creators. And he's got a fantastic podcast, a podcast, too, by the way. So this is his whole business, is teaching people how to start a YouTube channel. Not just start, but, but, but how to build an audience. And uh, it's all, uh, well, here we go. Next level YouTube tactics for established creators. But I think that it's for really anybody. But Miles will take you from A to B. Tim will take you from B to Z. So once you get to that point, I would just consume as much of this content as I possibly could in combination with uh, Miles' stuff. And then another creator I would strongly suggest is Nick Nimmin. Uh, the reason I suggest Nick is because he's th this is what he does uh, like miles he's more of a digital marketer that kind of went through this experiment and kind of takes you along with him for the ride uh, just for his uh, audience nick this is his full-time gig is he teaches you how to build a youtube channel and how to grow a youtube audience specifically do videos what cameras to use what software to use um all of the, the, the detailed minutia, he goes over it in great detail for free on his channel. There's a, a few others, uh, video influencers, these they're other great guys uh, that really know their stuff. It's all just a matter of who you kind of resonate most with. This is Sean and Benji, I think, are these guys. But uh, if, if you start with Miles Beckler, uh, Tim Schmoyer and Nick Nimmin, you're going to be just just de you know just can absorb as much of that content as you can over the span of like a weekend, and you're going to be ready to rock. Lastly, what I want to do is go over the the money side of this because I know everyone's interested in that, and uh, one of the ways I think I can help people build more freedom in their own life is 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 not just by opening people's eyes up to the authoritarians really attacking our our liberties today but also giving you kind of a side hustle or an opportunity to produce income to allow you to have more flexibility or freedom in the decisions you make as to where you live or maybe what you do with your job. I know a lot, a lot of people that watch the, the Rebel Capitalist channel, a lot of uh, Americans out there, average Joe and Janes, they are now put into a position where they either have to quit their job based on you know, what their beliefs are uh, or they have to do something that they just don't want to do. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. 
That's a bad, bad position to be in. So if you can grow this side hustle and have it supplement your income, it gives you a lot more flexibility. It gives you a lot more freedom to choose. Do I want to move to this state? Do I want to move to this country? Or do I want to quit my job? It gives you far more leverage. And at the end of the day, money doesn't buy you happiness, but it buys you a hell of a lot of, a hell of, a lot of freedom. So let's go in and, and see what type of numbers you could expect. Okay. So this channel, when, when I'm actually uh, paying full attention to it, gets between about 1 million and a million five views uh, a month. You can see now it's down to about 500,000. And that's because I've only been doing one whiteboard video a week. I've really been trying to focus on the Rebel Capitalist channel. So I was totally okay with that. Um, yeah, it is what it is. I, I, you guys know my uh, the urgency for me is really personal freedom and liberty. So that's why I wanted to allocate more mental bandwidth to the Rebel Capitalist channel right now. But usually, uh, so let's just go off these numbers though. 500,000 views. And I was paid by YouTube uh, $3,694. What I would usually see is when I would get like one million, a million two, something like that, I'd get around $8,000 a month. Uh, sometimes 10, depends. In uh, December, you, you make quite a bit more money because the advertisers are willing to pay more for the ads because they're trying to sell stuff for Christmas. So it's kind of seasonal, but uh, between eight and ten thousand dollars for a month, where I would get one or maybe one point two million views. Now I, I want to also emphasize the point that I never. Let's actually go to a video quickly here. Let's look at this one, and then you go over to monetize. And then you guys can see the options I choose. So you turn the, the, the monetization on. And then this, this automatically populates. And what it does is it automatically populates with the before video, during the video, and after the video. And I always uncheck the during the video. If you guys have ever seen a, a video or an ad during one of my videos on either channel, it's a mistake. It's that I just forgot to unclick this. And I made a conscious decision to do that because I, especially with the whiteboard videos, I didn't want any interruption in people's thought process while they're watching. That said, a lot of very high profile YouTubers, I'm sure a lot of people that you guys watch, they do ads during the middle. And that's fine. It's just a decision that you need to make. But the reason I want to point that out is because these ads, you get paid the most. <laughs> the ones that are during the video. So if you had the same, let's go back to the analytics. If you had the same 500,000 views for the month, or the last 28 days, and you had mid-roll ads, this $3,700 would probably be closer to, if I'm guessing 5,000, maybe, maybe 5,500. So you, you've got to keep that in mind. And for, let's go back here. For a lot of you watching this video right now, um, you know, five thousand dollars isn't uh, it's not fu money, <laughs> but well, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Usually, it wouldn't be, but in today's day and age, maybe it is because it allows you to give to to tell your employer fu based on what your monthly expenses is. Maybe it allows you to tell the state of California fu. So I just wanted to go over that to, to show you guys that uh, from a monetary standpoint, 
it could also be worth your time. So, I mean, it's a win-win. You can go out there, you can spread the message and the ideas of freedom, liberty, free market capitalism, while at the same time, you can create your own financial freedom and your and more physical freedom from the standpoint of you can just choose, hey, I want to move to Texas. I want to move to Florida. I want to move to Sandpoint, Idaho. I want to move somewhere where I have uh, more personal freedom and liberty. But maybe right now you can't because you're tied to your location through your job. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense, guys. Um, if you enjoyed this video, just let me know in the comments. And if you did, I'll, I'll keep doing them. Maybe once a week or once every couple weeks, we'll just hop on here. And maybe I'll do some review for the new people. But the people that are on this live stream and that choose to take action and start their own uh, podcast, their own blog, their own uh, YouTube channel, we can hop on as a group of rebel capitalists and and I can help you maybe take your content to the next level. So together we can help society in this country we call the United States of America get off the road to serfdom and back on the road to freedom. <laughs> One last thing I'd like to add, I want to point out is uh, in 2020, I started the Rebel Capitalist Show, which was another iteration. That's uh, where I started interviewing people. You guys know that that's been a, a, a significant success. And then I started ripping the audio and turning that into a podcast. The reason I'm going over this, guys, is because I forgot to go over it earlier. It's to show you that if you just focus on one thing that you're really good at, well, let's say that you're, you're you're good at YouTube videos like I am. Well, you can take the, the audio and turn that into a podcast. Now, all of a sudden, you've got two pieces of content on two different platforms to, to reach uh, maybe a new audience. Then you don't stop there. You can take that video and have someone turn that into a blog post. This is exactly what I do at georgegammon.com. And then... So I do the video, but then I have someone turn it into a blog post. I have someone else turn it into a podcast. And now all of a sudden, I've, I'm spreading my message through the written word, through audio, and through video. And I only have to produce one piece of content. And this is a strategy that Miles Beckler goes over. But I just wanted you guys to keep that in mind. Um, because once you start getting good at one thing, you can parlay that into uh, a lot of different pieces of content on different platforms to grow your audience exponentially. And uh, one really last example, one quick example I'll give you guys. Let's see if it'll pop up here. Here we go. So this podcast, The Rebel Capital Show, was a complete afterthought. I have put zero effort, none whatsoever, into the, the podcast. I, I honestly don't even really know that it exists because Thomas does. In fact, I don't even know who's doing the thumbnails. I think maybe my assistant is doing the thumbnails. She's uploading everything. She's doing the description. She's doing the title. And then Thomas is is editing the audio, and he's using the uh, live streams that I do on the Rebel Capitals channel, <clears throat> excuse me, and the interviews I do on the George Gammon channel. That's basically the podcast episodes. And from this complete afterthought, which takes me zero time and energy, the podcast in the last 28 days has done 210,000 downloads. So you say, okay, George, I, that sounds good, but I, I don't really have anything to measure that by. 
I won't go to the exact thing, but if you look at the charts, and I, I'm sure they're different per website, but the one main website, I forgot what it's called, but they do the, the, the rankings for different categories of podcasts based on the, their downloads and how many subscribers they have and whatnot. And if, if you look at the business category, so this is a very broad category. In the United States, this Rebel Capitalist show goes from like 50th to like 70th, you know, depending on kind of what everyone else is doing. So let's just say that it's 70th. It's the 70th most popular podcast in all of the United States in business and in investing in economic, obviously it's a lot higher, but in business. So the, the top 70 or the top 75 in the entire country. And this is something that I do just, I, that takes me zero time and energy. You see, and the, the reason I wanted to point this out is to, to show you guys what the possibilities are. Not only for to to uh, to build an income stream, but more importantly, to reach a large number of Americans out there who are the typical CNN viewer who just don't know what's going on, and with your message, you can move the needle. With, with your message, with your voice, you can impact the future for our kids and our grandkids. That's really what's at stake here. All right, guys, I've got to get into the office and crank out some more videos for the Rebel Capitalist Show. So I appreciate you hanging out with me. Make sure that you're always standing up fighting for freedom, liberty, free market capitalism. And we'll see you on the next video.